I have been asked this question a million times that how do we manage learning DSA while building up the portfolio at the same time, right? Now, if you are having the same question, this video might just be the answer for you. So continue watching. The first and most important tip that I can give you in managing learning DSA and building up a portfolio at the same time is leveraging open source. I cannot stress enough that how much open source contributions help in your profile, right? So even if you are building out your portfolio, even if you do not have any good projects, right? But you are a valuable and a regular contributor to any of the large open source projects, then you will be at a much better place than the people who are having good projects in their portfolio, right? Because you are doing real life work, you are contributing to real life projects and the amount of knowledge that open source contributions can give you, no other project will be able to give you at this point of time. Because contribution to open source will enhance your profile much more than you can think, right? So open source contribution is the best way that you can learn DSA and build out your portfolio at the same time because a lot of open source projects have very good issues that you can solve, which will help you in learning DSA as well as building out your portfolio at the same time. So it goes without a question that the best way in managing learning DSA and building out a portfolio is through open source contributions, right? And not only learning DSA or building up your portfolio, if you want to learn anything, right? Let's say you want to learn system design, you want to learn product management, you want to learn uh, how to maintain an open source project, right? Or you want to learn uh, UI design, anything, right? Open source contributions welcome each and every contribution that you can give to the project. So whatever you want to learn, even as complex as system architectures, everything can be learned simply by doing open source contributions. Even my career started through open source contributions itself, right? I used to contribute to a project through which I got my first job at Geeks for Geeks as an Android developer because the Android team lead at the time had a project on github to which i used to contribute and through that he contacted me that geeks for geeks was having a position vacant and that is how i got into the company i got the referral through the team lead itself without having to know him in person because i was just contributing to the projects and since he was already aware of my work he had no issues recommending me to his company and join his team so the best way in learning dsa all while building up your portfolio is open source contributions the second tip that I would give you if you are learning DSA while building out your portfolio would be to create interactive visualizations. These are the best kind of projects if you are going out to develop your portfolio all while learning DSA because interactive visualizations are visualizations which are done on different kinds of algorithms, right? And all the different kinds of algorithms require some kind of data structures. So if you are learning DSA all while building up your portfolio, I would highly encourage you to include interactive visualizations of the different algorithms into your portfolio as a project because this project will not only enhance your DSA capabilities but will also build out your portfolio and the best part is that this can be done in any language so it really doesn't matter that whatever language you're learning you can build an interactive visualization tool in that particular language itself so this would be my second tip that if you're learning dsa all while building up your portfolio try to include an interactive visualization project into your portfolio so my third tip to you would be to optimize the code base as much as possible. So let's say you are building any kind of project for your portfolio. Try to optimize the code base as much as possible because optimization can only be done when you have good DSA skills, right? So if you are building out any kind of project, try to optimize as much as possible so that you can practice your DSA abilities in that particular project itself, right? You would not need to solve any other coding problems to practice out your DSA because your own project is the best place where you can practice your DSA skills without any extra efforts, right? So if you are building any kind of project, try to optimize the code base as much as possible so that you can hit two birds with one stone that is you can learn dsa all while building up your own portfolio also this has an added benefit that since your project would be optimized it will be a much more easier task for any kind of recruiter to spot you because you have the code optimized much more than the people around you so let's say you are building the same project the same website as everyone else in your portfolio but your code base is much more optimized you will definitely stand out from the rest in the eyes of the recruiter right so this would be my third tip that if you are building up a project try to optimize the code base as much as possible. So now since you have optimized the code, here comes the fourth point that is to write good documentation. So if you're writing good documentation, then it can serve you in multiple ways. The first way is that it will help you in clearly understanding the algorithm or the optimization that you've done, right? So try to write the documentation as detailed as possible. And you know, as they say that teaching is the best way that you can learn something. So if you write the documentation as detailed as possible, then you'll not only yourself be understanding the project, but you'll also be able to explain it to anyone else, right? And also this documentation can serve as a very good differentiator 
intimidating factor when the recruiter sees the code base because generally people skip out on documentation whereas documentation is extremely important it will not only help you understand the code even better but it will also help the other person to understand the code without reading it right so documentation is very important and also there is an added benefit to writing the documentation and that is that whatever process you have followed whatever your thought process was while optimizing the code or implementing the algorithm you can take the same documentation and post it on different social media platforms right so let's say you post that documentation on linkedin or medium as a blog you can build your personal brand as well all while learning dsa and building up your portfolio right so this is extremely important i would highly encourage you that if you are optimizing the code or you are implementing any kind of algorithm try to write as detailed documentation as possible because it will reap you rewards in multiple ways possible so yeah these were my four tips if you are trying to manage learning dsa all while building out your portfolio if you found anything helpful in this video please consider liking and subscribing to the channel it really helps me out a lot so yeah this was it from my side until next time bye bye